This video will talk about the greatest common factor. When you're looking for the greatest common factor, you're actually looking for the largest factor to all the terms that you're trying to factor. So if we start out with just numbers, if we want to find the greatest common factor, the best thing to do would be just to start listing all the factors of 18. So 1 times 18, and 2 times 9, and 3 times 6, and then we have 6 times 3, but we've already listed that combination. So there's all the factors of 18. And 24 would be 1 times 24, and 2 times 12, and 3 times 8, and 4 times 6, and then it would be 6 times 4. Again, we've already, now we're working our way back the other direction. So we're looking to compare what they have greatest in common. They both have 1, and they both have 2, and they both have 3, and they both have 6. And after 6, there's really nothing else in common. 24 doesn't have 18 or 9, so the greatest common factor here is equal to 6. Let's try again. 45 would be 1 times 45. Now you might be able to do some of these just in your head. That's a 45. And 2 doesn't go in because it's not even, but 3 does. 3 times 15 is 45. 4 doesn't. 5 does, 5 times 9, and then 9 would be the next factor. 27 would be 1 times 27, and 2 doesn't, but 3 does, 3 times 9, and then it's going to be 9 times 3. So this only has 4 factors. 45 has 6 different factors, and we look for the greatest common one. It looks like the greatest one they have in common would be 9. They all have 1, 3, and 9, but then there's just 27 left here, which is not a factor of 45, so the greatest common factor is going to be 9. Now what happens when we have variables? With variables, you want to take the smallest exponent, because it has to be common to both of them. So I have an a, and I have two factors of b, and this for a, b, and for a cubed, b cubed, I have a times a times a, and b times b times b. And when I try to find the greatest common factor, the only the amount of a's that they have in common is 1, and they have two b's in common. So the greatest common factor is going to be a and then the b squared, two factors of b. And notice a with an exponent of 1 is the smallest between 1 and 3, and 2 on the b is the smallest exponent between 2 and 3. So it's the smallest exponent again. Now in this example, we have numbers and letters. Let's take care of the letters first, because it's a little bit easier. We've got a 2, and we've got a 1, and we've got a 4. So x is going to be the smallest exponent. And for the y's, we've got a 3 as an exponent, and a 2 as an exponent in both cases, in these last two cases. So we're going to have our greatest common factor down here is going to have some number, and then x y squared. Now we have to consider 8, 12, and 16. So again, we do 1 times 8, 2 times 4. That's all there are for factors of 8. 12 would be 1 times 12, and 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. And then 16 is going to be 1 times 16, 2 times 8, and 4 times 4. And it looks like 4 is going to be our greatest common factor that's common to all three, and the biggest thing that's common to all three. So our greatest common factor then would be equal to 4xy squared. So let's see if we can put this to use, kind of get the idea of how to use a greatest common factor to factor. So 5x plus 15. I'm going to say that I have x plus 3, so what do I need? I have just an x, and I want to get to 5x, then I need a 5 out here. So 5 times x would give me 5x. And what times 3 would give me 15? Well, that would be 5 times 3. So it must be that we had a common factor of 5. Okay, now we did, I did part of it here for you, but let's do it this way now. 3, 9, and 6. They're going to have 3 in common. And then a cubed a and a squared, we want the smallest exponent, so we just want a. So now we ask ourselves, we have a factor of 3 and an a, 
and I have 3a, but I need two more factors of a, so I have to put those inside. And if I were to distribute here, I'd have 3a cubed. So 3 times what will give you negative 9? Well, that would be negative 3. Negative 3 times 3 will give you negative 9, and I have a on the outside, one factor of a, so I don't need any more factors of a on the inside. And then finally, we have that plus 6a squared. So 3 times positive 2 would give me the positive 6a. And then I have a, one factor on the outside, but I need a total of two factors, so the other factor has to go inside. So 3a times the quantity a squared minus 3 plus 2a. Now what happens if we have two terms, but they've got more involved looking things? We've got this x times x minus 7, that's one term. And I've got 2 times x minus 7, that's my second term. So I'm looking to see what they have in common. Well, it looks like this is, remember, x times this quantity, x minus 7, and that's 2 times this quantity, x minus 7. So the x minus 7 quantity is what they both have in common. It's common to both of them. So greatest common factor is x minus 7, and if I want to factor it, I would say I have that x minus 7, and then we ask ourselves again, okay, well, I have x minus 7, but I need another factor of x, so that needs to go inside my second factor. And I have x minus 7, but what times x minus 7 will give me 2 times x minus 7? Well, it's a positive 2, so that would be my other factor. So x minus 7 is the common factor, and then I have leftovers, x plus 2. Let's try again. There's two terms here. So I have 5 times x minus 1, and I've got x, negative x times x minus 1. So in this case, if I just look at this, comparing it to that one, they have x minus 1 in common. That's my greatest common factor. So x minus 1 is a factor, and then x minus 1 times 5 will give me this first term, so I need a 5 inside that other parenthesis. And then I'm going to look at this term here, and x minus 1 times negative x is what gives me that second factor, so I need a minus x in my other factor.